Hi, I'm Rich Bowen, and this is the voice of Apache. A couple of weeks ago, I attended Cassandra Summit, which was uh, co-located with the AI.dev event in San Jose, California. And I had the opportunity to talk with a number of people from the Cassandra project, some of them on the PMC, others uh, in different roles in the project. And this is the first okay, cool. of those interviews. So we are here at Cassandra Summit in San Jose, California. And uh, I have the privilege of speaking with Aaron Plutz. Hello. What is the correct O in your... Oh, it's just Plutz. Plutz, yeah. okay. Yeah, you you got to pretend like the O is not there. All right. So. All right. Yeah, but it was close. I'll give you that. <laughs> Believe me, I've heard... Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, I'm Rich Bowen. So uh, the Cassandra project has been around for a really long time. Do you know about how long? It's it's almost twenty um, years old. Isn't like, it? well, I thought it was like two thousand eight. Two thousand eight, right? Okay. At Facebook, I think so, that was that was the origin of it. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, maybe, maybe seven. I mean, it's okay. getting it's getting close to that. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we're coming up on a. Exciting new release, the 5.0 release. So we've got, right. got a That's number right. of things to talk about. But uh, one of the things that Aaron said that he would talk about is some of the ways that Cassandra actually gets used. And uh, those of you that have been watching my videos for a long time know that the question I always ask is, what do people use it for? Because technology is boring. What's interesting is what people do with it. That's right. So, uh, tell me some stories. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I suppose probably the, um, the the most interesting use cases that, that I've worked on before have been mo mostly retail-based. Okay. Um, when I started using Cassandra in, I think it was like 2012, I was at uh, W.W. Granger in mm -hmm. Chicago, you know, industrial supplier. And, um, you know, we used it to back, like, um, their phone apps notification system. Okay. Uh, um, so, you'd, you'd have... Um, you know, like, we, we'd want to let somebody know that, like, an order's ready or, you know, some, some kind of status change like that. You'd, you'd see quite a bit. And then that would end up in Cassandra. Um, funny enough, we, we actually had a, um, a profanity system that would, that would kind of double-check, um, you know, any product reviews that we had on our site yeah. um, to make sure that there weren't any, you know, any naughty words in there or, or anything like that. Or, you know, kind of like George Carlin's, you know, seven yeah. words you can't say in television. But, but I can tell you there are far more than seven. Um, <laughs> we, we, had, we had like 200 entries in the Cassandra profanity database. So, so yeah, yeah, that was, that was one of the more, more interesting ones for sure. Um, yeah, I've... Um, I, I also had, uh, you know, about about six years at uh, at Target, you know, working with a bunch of different teams on, on Cassandra over there as well. Um, it it backs um, so many systems for for Target.com, like uh, I mean, pricing, uh, product, um, the uh, the recommend the um, not recommendations, the, the personalization mm -hmm. system. Um, probably my my favorite story of all does come. From Target, where um, we were building out, uh, we were building up drive up. So if you ever, you know, like, gone to Target and said, "Hey, I want a drive up app or drive up order," yeah, you know, you'll you'll pull up into the little stall and you'll tell them which which number you're in, and then they'll they'll kind of put your order together and cart it out and you know put it in your car for you. Well, um, <laughs> the original implementation of that. So you know, Target is based in Minneapolis, so a lot of times when something new comes out, they'll Kind of preview it in in some of the surrounding stores. Okay. So when we first started building this, we had we had um, drive up. Um, we we're just doing it in four stores. You know, of, of like the two thousand or so that Target has, it was just four. And the plan was do this for a little while, see how it goes. Um, you know, improve on some things, of course, and then expand it to you know fifty stores. You know, just in like the you know Minneapolis St. Paul metro area. Um, and I remember telling the, the drive-up team, I'm like, hey, <laughs> before you go to 50 stores, let me know, okay? Because this is just a little three-node cluster. <laughs> Make sure you let me know. Um, so, so long story short, my, my wife and I are out driving on, on Saturday, and we're, we're on the interstate. 
and I pass this giant billboard, and I'm like, oh, Target, what are we talking about? Drive up at Target, now available at 50 stores throughout the metro. <laughs> and I kind of went, huh. And, and my wife's like, well, why? What, what, what's going on? I'm like, they were supposed to tell me before they did that. <laughs> So yeah, I, I got I got home and then you know got on my laptop and double checked and that, that cluster was okay and I we we did, we did scale it out on Monday but that was that, that was one of the, one of the funniest stories I have about uh, about a, a real app built on Cassandra that, that yeah that's yeah. great now as you as the community works towards a uh, a new release mm -hmm. um, to what extent is that driven by the uh, the, the customer use cases as opposed to sort of the technological view of the leadership? Oh, that, that's, a, that's a good question, yeah. Um, you know, I know that um, the, uh, the, the actual users of Cassandra used to, used to be, in my opinion, more active, you know, kind of in, kind of in the earlier days in mm -hmm. terms of like, you know, which yeah. features we need and, and things like that. Um, Lately, not so much. You know, lately it's you know a lot around you know folks from Apple, and Netflix, um, etc. Kind, kind of driving a lot of that. But um, you know, I, I really do think though that a lot of those a lot of those implementations you know that you see at big places like like Netflix, for for instance. Um, I know that um, uh, Chang and Jordan o over at Netflix have worked on uh, a whole bunch of like new tools around. Um, managing, managing like the underlying storage la layer with Cassandra, and the thing is, is that if, if we didn't have them doing that work, if Netflix, you know, wasn't operating Cassandra at such a scale, we wouldn't have this feature now, or these extra features, these extra tools for for everyone else to use. So that's that's one way in which which yeah, you know, customer use cases absolutely do kind of still today. <laughs> You yeah. know, drive a, a lot of good development in this end. Yeah. Um, so, you've been with the project for, for over 10 years. That's right. What are some of the significant changes you've seen, either in the technology or in the in the community in that time? Wow. Um, <laughs> that's a that's a that's a really tough question. Um, I, I would say, you know, one of the more significant ones is, is very recent and is actually coming out in the Cassandra 5.0 is, um, is the unified compaction strategy. Okay. Now, Cassandra is known for, for having, um, um, you know, like size tiered compaction is kind of the default. Um, leveled compaction is an improvement on that if you have like a, a heavy amount of like read based use cases. Um, there's there's time window compaction if you have like a, a lot of like time series data or data that's like bucketed into, into different time windows, but really unified compaction, um, it's it's built in such a way that that kind of I don't want to say eliminates the need for a lot of those, but it, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Okay. it. It's certainly a much better default where you know today when you're building out a data model. As a as a developer, you you do have to kind of put some thought into, hey, what's my access pattern? How does this application really work under the hood? To determine what kind of compaction strategy do I need to implement here? Well, with with unified compaction, I think it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. Where that would be a good default, and then if someone needs to make some adjustments, you know, they they can certainly do so. But it's it's a much better starting point. Than, um, than what we have right now, actually, in size tiered compaction as, as a default. I, I think that's that's a bit of a game changer, for sure, for sure. And uh, I, there's a vote going on right now for the, the 5.0 release. What's beyond that? Has there been some discussion of what's in the in the, the 6.0 release? Is, uh, is that too far out to be thinking about? That might be a little too far out. I know there's been there's been some talk about, um, about what a 6.0 release um, could look like. It, you know, I, I think one thing that would be um, kind of safe to put in that would be um, uh, Cassandra running on Java 21, Sure. for instance. Um, I know that um, Ekaterina has done a lot of work Around making sure that Cassandra runs on a recent JDK, mm -hmm. um, you know, like with with four, she did a lot of the work that made it work on eleven, um, and with five, she did a lot of the work to a make it run on seventeen, and then b get eight out of there completely because yeah. we 
that, that, that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of a dirty little secret in the Cassandra community. Is so many people are running on JDKs that uh, yeah. we, we wish they weren't. So yeah, that's that that's really that's really helpful there. So yeah, um, Java twenty one for sure. You know, looking at something like six, but um, you know, from from what we've been talking about with um, like a lot of the, you know, there, there were a couple of features that. I mean, we would have loved to have had them in 5.0, but they just couldn't get there. So they're talking about like a 5.1 release mm -hmm. sure. for um, transaction cluster metadata and um, um, ACID transactions, actually, the, the Accord protocol going in. And I, I think that's going to be an exciting change as well. Well, I, thank I you very good. much, and uh, thanks for, for making time for this. Oh, of and, course. Uh, good luck in the in the upcoming release and in the next few years. Yeah, uh, Rich, thank you so much for having me on. This has been great. All right, thanks a lot.